Hello and welcome to what I've read in September. Uh, didn't read a ton this month. Uh, read eight books, which I guess is about average. But let's go ahead and get into everything I read. Uh, the first book was The Summer of Songbirds by Christy Woodson Harvey. Four women come together to save the summer camp that changed their lives and rediscover themselves in the process. I gave this book four stars. I enjoyed the book overall. It's very like a fun summer type read and it's based in like a summer camp. So, uh, you know, that's kind of fun to read. I always wanted to go to a summer camp when I was a kid, like a cabin type of summer camp. But, you know, I went on weekend ones, but not like a overall summer camp. So, you know, I felt a little jealous. Um, the atmosphere of the camp and the small town was fun and it was very like descriptive. The friendships were interesting to follow. One of the characters though was like really frustrating to me. Um, it wasn't really fun to read her perspective, but overall I thought it was a solid read. It was pretty interesting how everything worked out and you know, it's a good summer one to check out. Then I checked out The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. This is, uh, my friend let me borrow this book. Jane is a broke dog walker in a rich neighborhood where no one will look too closely at her past. She meets Eddie, a recent widow whose wife drowned with her best friend in an accident. I give this three stars. It's kind of like loosely based on Jane Eyre. Um, it's kind of like a reimagination of Jane Eyre. The story kind of felt underwhelming to me. I was anticipating like more suspense, more secrets, um, more tension, but everything was kind of just like half baked. It wasn't like super interesting. The twists were kind of lackluster. Sorry for Phoenix walking in the background. He just likes to be involved. Then I read None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. Alex Summer crosses paths with her birthday twin, Josie Fair. Josie has been listening to Alex's podcast and thinks she may be a person of interest for a new series. Josie's life is strange and complicated and Alex slowly starts to realize everything may not be what it seems. I give this three and a half stars. I really typically like Lisa Jewell's books, but this one wasn't one of my favorites. It kind of has like an interesting layout where it's like, has like a format of a, like a show, like a script, like a Netflix show. And then it will go to like the story and what you think is happening. The thriller aspect wasn't like super great to me. Um, overall, I just thought it was kind of okay. Then I read The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer. Years ago, a reclusive children's author quit writing under mysterious circumstances. Suddenly he resurfaces with a new book in a one of a kind competition. Lucy is one of the lucky few who is invited to participate and wishes this will give her the opportunity to adopt one of her students. I give this book four stars. The story is like very cozy seeming and it feels like very like magical, this island that they go to. The premise sounded like it would be like very competitive and it wasn't. So I was happy about that because I was like, man, I don't want to like hate all the contestants in here and be like rooting for Lucy. The whole time but all of them were like really nice people then i read the neighbor favor by christina forrest a shy bookworm lily enlists her charming neighbor nick to help her score a date to her sister's wedding not knowing he is the obscure writer she has been emailing um i gave this book four stars it was like a little charming romance um I really liked the emails back and forth in the beginning of the book. When they transitioned to like real life, it was kind of like fizzled out a little bit, but the emails kind of reminded me of You've Got Mail, which is one of my favorite movies. So I thought it was a sweet read overall. Then I reread Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Don't mind my copy. Um, Harry, you know, it's his fourth year of school. He's getting ready at Hogwarts and there's a tournament with other wizarding schools. Um, if you haven't heard of Goblet of Fire, I mean, there's a lot going on, but I uh, you know that's kind of the gist. I gave this book five stars. Uh, I didn't used to love this book as much, but over the past few years when I've reread it, it's, you know, kind of jumped up on my list. Uh, 
it's pretty much a fun read to see what's going on. Of course, there's like suspense and other things going on. But I honestly forgot how funny Harry and Ron were. I was like cracking up at times. I was like, man, I forgot how goofy they were. And I really wish that was like in the movies. I heard they're turning this into a series. So maybe we'll get that funniness in that. Um, but overall, it was a good time rereading Harry Potter. Then I reread Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, I took this on a vacation. I got it a little wet. There's probably some sand in here. Um, you know, I was reading it on the beach, so it felt very fitting. Uh, but this book is about four famous siblings who throw a party at the end of the summer. But over the course of 24 hours, their lives will change forever. I gave this book five stars. It really does provide like a deeper look into uh, the siblings and it's kind of... Um, Ties in with some of Taylor Jenkins Street's other books a little bit, but not too much. But overall, I really enjoy like the party aspect, all the different characters. It's not hard to follow all the different characters, which sometimes in other books it is. But all the characters are really interesting. I really enjoyed this read. Then I also read Seven Days in June by Tia Williams on vacation as well. Uh, this one didn't get as busted as my uh, Malibu Rising. Um, this is a reread as well. Uh, seven days to fall in love and then 15 years to forget and then seven days to get it back together. So Eva and Shane meet when they're teens. They go through essentially like a week together and you know they share their trauma with each other and then they reconnect when they're older. I give this book four stars just because the trauma that these two teenagers are going through is just way too intense and it's like whoa y'all need to Y'all needed to work on yourselves, which they do work on themselves and they're still working on themselves when they're older. Um, it's pretty deep, but it's well handled. I enjoy how everything finished up in the book and how um, the relationship kind of ends, not ends, but how the story finishes. Uh, so that's everything I read in September. And let me know if you have any recommendations as always. Thank you.